Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about one important cause for normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, that is renal tubular acidosis. First of all, we should know how to uh, diagnose a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Whenever there is metabolic acidosis, that means uh, pH is low, bicarbonate is low to compensate even carbon dioxide also will be low. So when you get an acidosis like that, we have to see the anion gap. To calculate the anion gap, we can calculate like this, sodium plus potassium that is positively charged ions minus chloride plus bicarbonate that is negatively charged ions. If uh, uh, anion gap is 12 plus or minus 2, that means uh, 10 to 14. If it is above that, above 12, you can call it as high anion gap metabolic acidosis. If it is 10 to 12, it is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. There are a lot of causes for uh, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. In that one of the important cause for uh, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis is renal tubular acidosis. Renal tubular acidosis means there is accumulation of acid in the body. Uh, the control over the kidney or acid accumulation is lost but kidneys are normal so impaired renal hydrogen and excretion or impaired bicarbonate resorption or abnormal aldosterone production or response these are the causes for renal tubular acidosis the defect can either excrete hydrogen ion or generation of uh, bicarbonate iron or inappropriate reabsorption of bicarbonate. So these are the causes for renal tubular acidosis. Whatever it is, the acidosis is produced by kidney disorder but kidney failure is not there. So renal tubular acidosis, there is a defect in uh, removal of bicarbonate or acid handling with uh, normal renal function, GFR is normal. It's a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. It's a non-anion gap hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. So three important features are hyperchloremia and acidosis. It's a normal anion gap acidosis. Urine pH is more than 5.5. So that is the important uh, feature of renal tubular acidosis. Many patients are asymptomatic, but some patients can present with electrolyte imbalance or some kidney disorders or some uh, other problems like uh, some other diseases like SLE, Jogren syndrome or some drug induced history, drug, drug intake history can be there. But on taking an ABG, you can see it's a normal can anion gap metabolic acidosis. There are four important subtypes we will see each one afterwards. Type 1 distal RTA, type 2 proximal RTA, type 3 mixed RTA that is very very rare, not, not at all common in our country, type 4 hyperrenemic hyperaldosteronism that produces RTA. Type 1 kidneys are unable to acidify the urine pH less than 5.5 in the presence of metabolic acidosis as a result of impaired distal hydrogen ion secretion. So this condition can be associated with hypokalemia. We know that hypokalemia can produce muscle weakness, hypokalemic paralysis, respiratory distress, ECG changes like U wave, so many abnormalities can be there. Hypocitriuria, citrate in the urine can be elevated hypercalciuria and nephrocalcinosis, renal stones are very very common that occurs in chronic uh, RTA type 1, nephrolithiasis and chronically if you uh, don't treat this patient ultimately patient may, may develop uh, rickets and osteomalacia due to calcium defects. This disease can be congenital or it is associated with Autoimmune diseases, that is very important because we treat many patients who is having SLE, Jogren syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic sclerosis, 
thyroiditis, hepatitis, primary biliary cirrhosis, all these conditions you can see some patients devel develop acidosis that is a normal anion gap acidosis that is mainly due to uh, renal disorder that leads to RTA secondary to these diseases. Some toxins like toluene, lithium, amphotericin, in, the, in that uh, lithium is very important because lithium can uh, present with acute uh, poisoning like the massive dose of lithium can be taken by a patient who is on chronically on lithium or some patients can get admitted with simply uh, because of lithium induced toxicity because many of these patients are depressed depressive disorders having depressive disorders they, so they can go to toxicity amphotericin is a drug which is used in fungal infection that also sometimes can produce RTA here what is abnormality the abnormality is bicarbonate is less less than 10 milligrams per liter, urine pH is more 5.5, serum potassium is low. In that most dangerous thing is serum potassium. Some patients can go to respiratory uh, failure, but th that is not very common. Unlike other conditions where the patient come with uh, uh, hypokalemic periodic paralysis and all, here they don't have m that much hypokalemia and that, that much clinical finding, but rarely some patients can go to weakness. Uh, nephrolithiasis uh, or nephrocalcinosis is one of the important finding in uh, distal RTA. So you can see the x-ray multiple stones or uh, calcium stones are there in the kidney and surrounding area. So that is a very classical finding. Now type 2 is next modern thing, modern acidosis impaired by carbonate resorption, reabsorption in the proximal tubular where the bulk of filtrate bicarbonate is recovered. So wherever uh, that uh, bicarbonate is recovered, so there is an impaired bicarbonate reabsorption. So that can lead to acidosis. So alkali is lost. The associated features are hyperphosphaturia, hyperuricosuria, hypercalciuria, non-selective amino aciduria, glycosuria. In addition to hyperchloremic acidosis, rickets, osteomalacia are predominant effects of Fanconi syndrome. So Fanconi syndrome is a type, uh, the, there also you can get a type of uh, renal tubular acidosis, there you can get all these features. Now congenitally, Fanconi syndrome is one of the important conditions, Wilson disease also can present like this. One important condition that we should never forget in a normal person who come with the renal tubular acidosis, we have to rule out multiple myeloma. Amyloidosis, hyperparathyroidism, heavy metal toxicity, drugs like carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, all these things are very important. Here plasma bicarbonate is 15 to 20 milli equivalents, urine pH is less than 5.5, serum potassium is low. So remember, uh, in multiple myeloma, the important cause for acidosis will be renal tubular acidosis. That is a common cause we uh, get in a uh, medical practice, especially in emergency medicine. Now, almost all patients who is having uh, renal tubular acidosis type 2, we have to investigate for multiple myeloma and multiple myeloma, many of these patients can have renal tubular acidosis type 2. Type 3 is not at all common in our country, but uh, uh, theoretically there is, uh, there is a condition called as type 3 uh, renal tubular acidosis. We will not go to the details of that disease because it is not very common in clinical practice. You can read about the features of this disease here. It is called as mixed renal tubular acidosis also. Now type 4, that is another important uh, uh, acidosis, that is hyper Kalemic distal RTA. So here potassium is high. That is one important condition. Uh, so uh, previously two conditions we get hypokalemia with acidosis. Here one important condition who is having hyperkalemia with acidosis. There are a lot of other conditions where you get hyperkalemia with acidosis, including renal failure. You can get hyperkalemia with acidosis. But normally hypokalemia present with alkalosis but if you see hypokalemia with acidosis think about type 1 type 2 renal tubular acidosis the defect here is it occurs due to low aldosterone levels or due to resistance to its effects aldosterone levels are low or the effects are low this will lead to decreased excretion of hydrogen ions and potassium 
that that leads to hyper hyperkalemia with acidosis the associated features are renal salt wasting frequently many many salts are wasted including sodium potassium sodium sorry not potassium sodium and other uh, salts are also uh, lost so examples for this is hyper uh, hypoaldosteronism primary or secondary obstructive nephropathy spironolactone is an important drug ac inhibitor is also important drug in clinical practice renal transplant rejection so in emergency room most important causes for type 4 is uh, one is obstructive nephropathy and spironolactone or ac inhibitors here plasma bicarbonate 16 to 20 mg per liter urine ph is low 5.5 serum potassium is high type 4 rta manifested by hyporeninemic hypoaldosteronism it occurs in patients with uh, chronic kidney disease or called chronic dis- kidney disorder this is one condition where you can get kidney disorder also with renal tubular acidosis so one important cause for uh, this one is obstructive u- u- uropathy and diabetic nephropathy both are uh, can have this type of disorders you can see the difference between all these three types uh, the type 4 is very common mechanism impaired hydrogen and excretion type 1 type 2 impaired bicarbonate resorption uh, type 4 decreased in aldosterone secretion or activity plasma bicarbonate less than 10 in type 1 15 to 20 in type 2 16 to 22 in type 4 plasma potassium usually low but tends to be normalized with alkalinization usually low and decreased further by alkalinization and type 4 is very high that is the major difference urine ph more than 5.5 in type 1 more than 7 if plasma bicarbonate is no- normal and uh, in late stages when uh, plasma bicarbonate is depleted it will drop down to less than 5.5 and type 4 is uh, less than 5.5 type 3 is not at all common so we don't uh, routinely get it so urinary anion gap is very important uh, investigation which will tell you uh, what type of acidosis it is in a patient with hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis a positive urinary anion gap suggests impaired renal distal acidification that means he is having renal tubular acidosis you can calculate the uh, um, u- urinary anion gap by urinary uh, anion minus urinary cations sodium plus potassium minus chloride that will give you the anion gap so but uh, this type of investigations we routinely don't do in clinical practice in especially in emergency room but you can look all these things in ic when you have doubt you have doubt whether any associated uh, other types of acidosis is there or not we can see here how how will you diagnose uh, this uh, three types of uh, uh, rtas with urinary gap so urinary anion gap if it is high then there is a there is a possibility of uh, type 1 2 or for renal tubular acidosis the urinary ph is high then you suspect type 1 if the urinary ph is less than 5.5 with hyperkalemia it is type 2 uh, less than 5.5 with hyperkalemia it is type 4 so if there is good urine output you can investigate renal tubular acidosis on the basis of uh, urinary anion gap with urinary ph and hypokalemia or hyperkalemia that will give you the diagnosis now management is very important uh, in any types of acidosis initially we always try to give uh, fluids but here the uh, the treatment is slightly different from other types of acidosis so distal rta correct the primary cause what our primary cause we, we have seen in the previous slides we have to treat oral bicarbonate tablets are available that can be given uh, that can be given 1 to 2 ml equivalents per kg per day proximal rta bicarbonate replacement is uh, requirement is very high 10 to 15 ml equivalents per kg per day we have to give then thiazide diuretics can be given it, it enhances the proximal tubule bicarbonate reabsorption type for dietary potassium restriction because hyperkalemia is there so that has to be restricted loop diuretics can be the given 
oral bicarbonate re- replacement like uh, uh, distal RTA you can give 1 to 2 milligrams per kg per day. Potassium binders can reduce the potassium level. Sodium polystyrene sulfonate chassis can be given that can absorb the potassium and remove the potassium from the intestine. Mineralocorticoids like fluorocortisone uh, 50 to 200 microgram per, per oral daily can be given. So we have uh, discussed about one of the important causes for uh, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis that is renal tubular acidosis. It is uh, very common in clinical practice. You can see renal tubular acidosis uh, especially in patients who are admitted with ICU, those who are having SLE, Jogren syndrome, uh, many diuretics, patients are on diuretics or patients are on lithium, patients are on having on uh, amphotericin. So many of these conditions you can get renal tubular acidosis. Many a times we miss this diagnosis because uh, uh, we, uh, many doctors are not aware uh, about how to diagnose this condition. But uh, in a in a in a doc in a uh, in a settings like ICU or ER, we have to make a diagnosis of renal tubular acidosis. We can avoid uh, many uh, situations uh, which can lead to renal tubular acidosis. And if required, uh, this is a one of the condition where you give bicarbonate as a treatment for acidosis. Many other conditions uh, like uh, diabetic ketoacidosis or sepsis induced uh, acidosis, lactic acidosis. There all we don't use bicarbonate routinely to treat the uh, acidosis. But this is one condition where you use uh, bicarbonate as a main modality of treatment. But most of the time this is treated with oral bicarbonate tablets uh, IV can be given in, in, in an emergency but uh, these conditions are not very life threatening so oral tablets are mostly uh, adequate thank you